Today, we're going to talk about Lamar Jackson is playing out of this world as the Baltimore Ravens officially ended the Cincinnati Bengals playoff hopes, some Baltimore Ravens roster news, and a few key thoughts when it comes to the playoffs. But first, Ravens fly. Let's fly. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I apologize for the late video, but because of the purple rising Thursday night game versus the Cincinnati Bengals, I lost my voice. I was at that game screaming at the top of my lungs, hoping to cheer my team on. And now I am officially almost back to normal. My voice is slowly but surely coming back. And I figured that, hey, why not make a video about it? It was gonna be a video about the game, but we're a few days past that so i'm just going to give my thoughts on a few key notes and a few key pointers that i believe is going on with the baltimore ravens so as far as the purple rising thursday night football game it was an exciting affair that myself and my daughter jasmine attended and they did not disappoint this may have been the game of the year throughout the nfl and lamar jackson put on a second half show showing the entire world why he is the leading candidate for the MVP or should I say MV3 the beginning of this game what is going on a lot of us were in the stands dumbfounded on how long the Cincinnati Bengals had the ball during the first quarter the Ravens did not get much done but in the second half everything came alive thanks to a Marlon Humphrey fumble once that fumble occurred, the Baltimore Ravens took over the game and went on to win 35-34. Now during that game, Lamar Jackson had 290 yards passing and four touchdowns. Standout wide receiver, which was a surprise to most of us, was Tylen Wallace, who had three catches for 115 yards. Now the Cincinnati Bengals limited Derrick Henry to only 16 rushes for 68 yards in the touchdown, but I put more of that on Todd Munkin. I don't know what was going on with the play calling during the first half of this game, but it was unacceptable. The first drive lasted about all of 45 seconds, and by the time I took a picture and turned around, the Baltimore Ravens were off the field. The team played lackluster, and just the energy in the stadium was down. Like, it just felt off. Like, it was quiet. People were sitting in their seats, and we didn't know what was going on. But the second half is when everything turned around. The Baltimore Ravens decided to get things going and had 287 yards and 28 points in the second half alone. Lamar Jackson himself showing his incredible MVP play of this season by himself. And this statistic shocked me. I knew that Lamar was playing great. I knew that he was doing things this season that he hasn't been doing in the past in his career. But Lamar Jackson had 200 yards and three touchdowns in the fourth quarter alone. You heard that right, 200 yards passing in the fourth quarter. I remember early on in Lamar's career, that would be a game total for him. But he has shown his mastery of this offense. He has shown that the NFL and the game has truly slowed down for him and he is head and shoulders above everybody else. So on the season, Lamar has 24 passing touchdowns. He had 24 passing touchdowns all of last season and he's done this in 10 games. Granted, Cincinnati Bengals are one of his favorite teams to play with as he now has a 10-1 record versus them. Now, Joe Burrow did everything in his power to keep this team afloat to help the Bengals stay in playoff contention. Joe threw for 428 yards and four touchdowns. Jamar Chase himself had a hell of a game with 11 receptions for 264 yards and three touchdowns. But Joe Burrow's play in the two games versus the Baltimore Ravens just have not been enough. And to put things into perspective, these are some crazy numbers. In two games versus the Baltimore Ravens, Joe Burrow has a 64% completion percentage with 820 yards, nine touchdowns, and one interception. Two games versus one team. And that just truly tells you how bad this Baltimore Ravens defense is. And to go a step further, we have Jamar Chase. In two games, he has 21 catches, 457 yards, and five receiving touchdowns. But this loss drops the Bengals to four and six, and they still have a tough road to climb with some of the games they have going down the line. This may be a team that we don't want to turn around and we do not want to see 
in the playoffs because it is extremely hard to beat a team three times in one season. And if they can get back T. Higgins healthy and bring back Orlando Brown Jr. for the offensive line, who knows how this game may go next time if the Baltimore Ravens defense doesn't pick things up. But never fear, Lamar Jackson is here even with the Bengals going up 21 to seven in this game and pretty much stopping the Ravens from doing everything that they needed to do, they could not stop Lamar Jackson in the fourth quarter. And in the fourth quarter, since 2021, Lamar Jackson has three comebacks when they were down by 14 plus points, which is the most in the NFL. In this game, he had a perfect passer rating in the fourth quarter alone. So is that the final nail? Was this the final nail in the coffin of the Cincinnati Bengals season? I will say so, because as good as Joe Burrow's playing, as good as that offense is, I don't think, like us, defensively, they have enough to get it done. And Joe Burrow being Joe Burrow, one thing he is not is Lamar Jackson. His numbers are comparable, but for some reason, when it matters the most, Joe Burrow just isn't getting it done. So as for the 2024 season, ding dong, the witch is dead and the Cincinnati Bengals may just be done. And speaking of the playoffs, there is a statistic that does not bode well for our Baltimore Ravens. And that statistic is no team has ever won a Super Bowl with the 32nd ranked defense in the league. It has never been done. Now we can never say never because there have been a lot of firsts in the NFL recently where there was the first overtime game. We had the first Super Bowl champion to win a Super Bowl at home. And with Lamar playing the way that he has, we can never say that hey, it's not gonna happen because you just never know. But it has never been done. And it is quite frankly a daunting task that Lamar can keep up this level of play for the rest of the season all the way through the playoffs with the defense performing the way that it does. And I know some people are going to say we aren't going to face a Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase type team at all for the rest of the season. I beg to differ. We got one coming up next week with Russell Wilson, eh, not Joe Burrow-ish, but he's played well enough in George Pickens, who is not Jamar Chase, but it can still be a lethal combination. Then if we make it to the playoffs, we're going to see Patrick Mahomes with Xavier Worthy, DeAndre Hopkins, and maybe Hollywood Brown coming back. We're going to see a Josh Allen with a Keon Coleman and an Amari Cooper. We may even see a rejuvenated Houston team if they can get it together with a CJ Stroud, a Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and a Joe Mixon. Like there is a possibility we could face a team in the playoffs that has the firepower to get it done. So something needs to happen with this defense. And what did not happen with this defense was a major move made during the trade deadline. Now the Ravens did trade with the Rams to get Tredavious White, but there were some other moves that were tried to be made or speculated to have been in the works, but they just fell through. With the Ravens trying to bring back fan favorite Calais Campbell, there were also rumors that the Ravens were all in on trying to get Marshall. Sean Lattimore, the cornerback for the Saints, but that just didn't happen. These may be some needed additions that the Ravens could possibly use going forward because quite honestly, this defense is trash. Now during the Cincinnati game, Kyle Hamilton injured his ankle. He seems to be okay. He had a walking boot on. Hopefully he will be ready with the extended rest for next week's game. But the Ravens also lost one of their pass rushers when they tried to play the roster move game and tried to get Yannick Ngakwe back onto the practice squad, but he was signed by the New England Patriots. I don't know what is going on with this defense. I don't know what can be done to fix it. I don't know if it's the players, if it's the coaching, if it's a combination of both, but something needs to change. They cannot expect for Lamar to go in for the rest of the season and all throughout the playoffs and get it done by himself. Now, if he did actually do this on his own, it would be for me such a validation of who he is. No more will we have to hear that, well, the Ravens are only winning games because they have the number one defense in the league. The Ravens are only winning games because their defense is getting so many turnovers and doing so many things. Well, this year, ain't it because Lamar Jackson is the only thing outside of Derrick Henry that's making the Ravens prevalent and this last game showed when Derrick Henry is not on and Derrick Henry is not getting 100 yards the Ravens still can win because Lamar is doing Lamar type things 
And speaking of 100 yards, the Baltimore Ravens lost their 100-yard streak. They were a few games from breaking their own record, and how they lost it was actually stupid. I mean, you expect it, but it was actually stupid. The Ravens had 100 yards exactly until the final kneel down where they lost a yard and put them at 99 yards. I know we don't care about records, but it would have been pretty cool for them to continue the streak and keep things going. But this is one less thing that the Ravens have to worry about. But the one thing that the Ravens really, really, really have to worry about is what the hell is going on with Marcus Williams? What the hell's going on out here? There were times where I was watching this game and I know that Marcus Williams has played bad throughout the season, but I saw him just standing flat footed on that long Jamar Chase touchdown. I don't know who the hell he was guarding. I don't know who he was looking at, but he just watched Jamar Chase run right past him. And I'm like, yo, you cannot be playing this bad. Like, yo, you used to be so good. That is the reason the Ravens signed you to a $70 million contract. But ever since then, the Ravens have not gotten their return on investment. And this season, unfortunately, we don't have anybody to put in behind you unless we do and they're just not playing him. But Marcus Williams is a liability in this passing defense. Once Kyle Hamilton went down, that just exacerbated the issue and made things so much worse. The Ravens need to get this safety thing figured out before the playoffs start or it's going to be an early exit. If this defense can't stop anybody, if Marlon Humphrey, who seems to be the only one causing turnovers, cannot make plays, this Ravens team is not going to get very far. And it's sad because Lamar is playing so well this season. Lamar is doing everything. And you can see the frustration in his face. You can see the disappointment that, listen, I, each and every season, have elevated my game to new levels. Why aren't my teammates doing the same? Shit, Tylen Wallace went out there and elevated his game. That run down the sideline was a thing of beauty, which a lot of people probably thought he didn't have in him. He's raised his level of play. Everyone is raising their level of play, except for the linebackers on back throughout this defense. And for the Ravens to truly make it to the mountaintop, they need to figure out what the problem is. And more times than not, the issue is going to be the coaching. Nah, man, I'm cool.